Thank you, thank you, thank you. Tawa. Are you happy and you know, say amen. Amen. Are you happy and you know, say amen. Amen. If you're happy and you know, and you really want to show. Thank you very much. Simon, our guests, our teachers, our dear students. This evening, we are very lucky people because we shall not drink from the tap, we shall drink from the source. I take this chance to invite Mr. Ideas to come and tell us what they came to tell us. Welcome. Jonathan, we are working together with him. Uh, 
pamoja na wenti chima na kusaidia kutoka kwa mmoja 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 kwa mmoja
Now some of these are duplicates. So the duplicates, you can put one down, okay? Put one of them down if you're a duplicate. On the duplicates, you can put one down. And just be sure everyone in the crowd gets a chance to see them. So there should only be three signs. There are, there are two duplicates. One, two, three. So this one, that is okay. This is okay. And hold it wide. Abortion at 21 weeks. Because this baby boy, this baby boy will become baby Malachi. 21 weeks. This is the second trimester. Please give me, give me, they will come around, okay? They will slowly come around and you will see them. Give me the courtesy, I'm asking you. Now, Umba, the courtesy of remaining seated, they will come around so everyone will get a perspective. And I'm asking my volunteers to slowly, carefully, don't stumble, walk around the crowd, okay? Baby Malachi, 21 weeks. This baby girl, we don't have a name for her. Very rare, but it happens. Abortion in the third trimester. 30 weeks, almost ready to be born. I would ask you also to slowly walk around, don't shoot, around so everyone gets a look, okay? Again, baby Malachi, you can walk around. And actually, because we have another Malachi, you gentlemen can take this one from those bed. So we have first trimester, third trimester, and second trimester. You know pregnancy, gestation for a human being, is divided into what? Trimesters. Sema, say with me. Trimester. And the prefix tri, it means three, right? Simio. First trimester, second trimester, and third trimester. And these doctors, fake doctors, let me tell you, but some of them are have a real medical license, but which murder these babies in the womb. They do it sometimes in first, second, and third trimester. But what we're here to tell you is not only to shock you, okay, these images, again, first trimester, 10 weeks, being compared to the genocide in Rwanda, genocide in my country, USA, where we have legalized abortion. We have legalized abortion and we are suffering, let me tell you. We are suffering because we have legalized the killing of our children. We don't have enough young people in Europe, in the United States, in the United Kingdom. Did you know that? We have, through contraception, through abortion, through all these things, we have reached a degree where our population is aging so fast that we don't have enough young people to replace them and to support the old people. Are you getting what I'm saying? What I'm telling you is that there are forces in this world right now, here in Kenya, here in Africa, here in East Africa regionally, and right here in Nakuru, who want to make these, are you listening to me, men? These your sisters, these your friends, these your schoolmates, they want to make them the mother of a dead child. They want to make you the father of a dead child. Are you getting what I'm saying? I want you to repeat after me. Now, if you say, if you say it's not true, then don't repeat. I don't, want to, I, I don't want you to speak a lie. But it, if you can believe this in your heart, repeat after me. Sex. Is a gift from God. Amen? Amen. Let's say one more time. Sex is a gift from God. Hallelujah. Sexuality is a wonderful gift. The Bible compares sexuality to the union of Christ, of God with his people, of Christ with his church. Did you know that? Did you know that? And let me know it. Let me tell you, I'm not only talking to the, I'm, I'm here as a Christian, I'm an Orthodox Christian. In our group we have Protestants, in our group we have Catholics, we even have a few Muslims in our group. But I'm here as a Christian, me, myself, Jonathan. I'm here as a witnessing for Christ, okay? But let me tell you, with our Muslim friends, we even with our Hindu friends, we have an agreement, we, we believe some things in common. And one of them is that God is the one who creates human life, isn't it? God is the one. And God is the one who has the right to take it, isn't he? Isn't he? And this is very innocent life. Amen? So when we say that sex is a gift from God, amen? But it's a very, very beautiful.
beautiful, wonderful, powerful, and dangerous gift, isn't it? Anything that is very powerful, for example, I drove in here today, the bus is passing from St. Francis of Assisi, I drove in a Toyota Noah. These cars, they're very powerful, aren't they? But they give us a big benefit, don't they? Sindio? Are you listening to me? Do I have your attention? These cars, these vehicles, these lorries, these buses, they give us a big benefit. They move us from point A to point B. There's a big advantage to having them, isn't it? Has everyone gotten a look at these signs as they went around? You've gotten a good look. Okay, I'll relieve my volunteers now. You can roll them up. I thank you very much. Give them a hand. So the cars are a big benefit to us, aren't they? But they are also very dangerous. Are you kidding me? These same cars which move us from point A to point B at 10 times, 100 times the rate that we can walk sometimes. Hmm? These super high rail trains, all these methods of automotion and locomotion, they come at a high price. Do you know that automobile deaths are the number one cause of death in my country? I expect also in your country. Because let me tell you, I don't normally criticize Kenyans in, in Kenya, but you people drive crazy. <laughs> you drive crazy. Hey, you drive crazy. But also in my country, people are dying every day through what? Gari. Accidents. So just like cars, just like anything powerful, sexuality. Your sexuality as a young woman or a young man. It's very good, it's very powerful, but it must be handled with responsibility, isn't it? Please say with me, responsibility. responsibility. Amen. God is pro-sex. God created sex. That attraction you feel as your body is changing, as your body has matured. By the way, most of you that I'm seeing here, you look like adults. Somehow you are children, I, technic, technically, isn't it? But in reality, I'm looking at the faces of young adults, isn't it? And so you're in that in-between place where the bodies are giving you many signals. Let me tell you, it doesn't get much easier as an adult. It doesn't. You have to learn responsibility and many adults never do. And just like Brother Tim was telling us about alcoholism, also, it also goes into the area of bad sexual habits, okay? And I'm not going to go into detail until I get with the boys. We're going to separate soon, in just a few minutes. And you're going to talk with these uh, lady volunteers we have here. By the way, while I'm talking now, I would ask our volunteers to begin distributing uh, to the girls, which are on this side, the models, which we have in that suitcase. We have models, and if you're a boy and you find you have a model, give it to a girl, okay? A handheld model. And we have cards which say, I am a person, and they are for the young men. If we run out of those, we'll also give the young men a model, but not until we run out of those. Are you understanding me? So if you're a girl and you find you have a card, give it to a boy. If you're a boy and you find you have a, uh, a model, give it to the girl. The models for the girls come with a small card. That is for you guys. Are you following me? The big cards are for the boys. Have you got me? Okay, and they're in the case now. So while we are talking here, before the boys leave, we'll be distributing those, okay? Now, we're going to split up in about... <laughs> And who has the time? In about 10 minutes, we're going to split up and the boys are going to follow me and Councillor Mary, all right? So let me quickly launch into what I have to say to you before we run out of time. I want you to look at me. Look me in the eyes. Sexuality is a gift. As we've already established, it is a gift that is dangerous, isn't it? It is a gift that we have to we have to have a lot of respect for one another to exercise it. Just like with a car. When you see someone has pulled in the intersection, oh, he made a mistake. You don't ram him, do you? You wait. You realize he made a mistake. Maybe you feel impatient. Maybe you feel stressed. You know what? You have to, because of your life and because of his. And in this case, because of the lives of these children. Are you kidding me? These children 
And how often do children pay the price for the mistakes we men and we women make? Are you getting me? Sometimes we men, you know, we men, we make a lot of, there's women and we men. And we men, we make many mistakes and because we're big and scary and somehow hairy, isn't it? We take a lot of blame. I saw a man had, a uh, month and a half ago, it was in the, the newspaper here in Kenya, that a man had killed his wife. He didn't like the way that uh, she had uh, cooked his dinner and he set her on fire and he killed her. Men can be very cruel, isn't it? Some men abandon their children. Some men, some children never know who their father is. The men can be really bad. Let me tell you something, that knife cuts both ways. We're all human beings, aren't we? And we got in this together. Are you following me? Even women can be killers. We get in this together. Today it is time for men, and men we are going to talk a, a bit more together. Are you with me? Men, young men, are you with me? It is time for the young men to take responsibility. Take responsibility. Repeat after me, please. Take responsibility for your sexuality as a man. Take responsibility for your sexuality as a woman. Amen? You know, there was a time when women were not doing the seducing. Normally it's the men, isn't it? Doing the seducing. Are you hearing me? These seducers. But even today with television, with so many voices, so many influences, many times it's the young ladies. Have you heard me doing the seducing? Young women, don't be seducers. Are you hearing me? Don't be seducers. Let the man take the responsibility. Let him take the initiative. Encourage him to do so. Young men, take responsibility. Amen? Amen? All right. So we want the young men to have the cards and the young women to have the models. These models are of an innocent baby in the womb. And by the, by the way, the pictures are a real photograph. That is not a drawing. That is not a Photoshop. That is a real photograph of a real child. Seven weeks from conception. I am a person. The models are of 11 weeks. So that child in that picture would be about the same size as the head of this model. Are you kidding me? Seven weeks and 11 weeks from fertilization or conception. On the back of these cards, and by the way, you know young men can share these cards with the women. You can show them to the young ladies, isn't it? And young ladies, you can also show your models. Those are for you to keep. You can show them to the young men. After we separate, we have a gift. And thanks to Brother Craig Walterscheid from USA, has donated one pack of pads. Now listen to me, young women. One pack of pads for every young woman. And I want to ask you a favor. Young women, please listen to me. If you find you have these pads, there should be at least one pack for every young woman. If you find you have pads, but you know you have enough pads, I'm asking you, are you hearing me? I'm asking you to share with the young woman you know, quietly share. Not today necessarily, maybe another day, but share with the one who doesn't have more. Are you kidding me? Please share. Please be courteous and share. So we're here because of love, and we're here to tell you we love you, we are here for you, and we don't want you to make mistakes in your sexuality. If you have made a mistake, God in heaven is a forgiving God. Amen? Amen. But God requires us to what? Mutubu? Is that the one? Mutubu. We repent. Sindio. We must repent. Even if it's 70 times 7. But let me tell you from experience, okay? I'm talking to you now from experience. It's better to repent early than late. Amen? Better to repent early than late. Are you getting me? God takes people who sign up at the 11th hour. Amen? But how much better is it not to waste those 10 hours of the day with regret? Because let me tell you, until you've died, the regret never goes away. Are you hearing me? When you mess up your life, and when you, young men, when you mess up someone else's life, especially a young woman, 
and it cuts both ways, that regret never goes away. Are you hearing? So it's better to repent early than the 11th hour. And let me tell you something else. Sometimes when you tell yourself, I repent at the 11th hour, maybe you die at the 6th hour. Then you're hearing me. You can think, oh, I'll repent, I'll repent, I'll repent, and then that car comes, boom, you look on, you are out of here. And you didn't repent. You understand me? You never took life seriously. It was one chance to heal. One chance. And this thing of sexuality, we're about to divide and, and go our separate ways, young men and women, because we're about out of time. But this thing of sexuality is so serious. You can't take it back. When you find out that you're the past, can you go back? When you find you, you've made a girl pregnant, young woman, when you find your button pregnant, you can't go back. There's only one way. The baby will be born, be born dead. The baby will be born dead or alive. Senor, that baby will be born. At whatever stage that baby comes out, once the baby is there, in the image of God, the baby will be born dead or alive. Say with me, dead or alive? Dead or alive. All right. I want to leave you a scripture. If you happen to have your Bible, Bible. Proverbs. Proverbs Solomon. Proverbs of Solomon, chapter 31, verse 8. And 31 is the one mostly of that chapter. He's talking about a young woman. Isn't it? Do I have your attention? But the beginning of, of the verse 8 is talking to a young man. And what Solomon says, young man, oh, my son. My son, Lamuel, that's your name. Lamuel, she says, open your mouth. Say now, open your mouth. She says, open your mouth for the tongue, for those who cannot speak for themselves. Proverbs chapter 31, open your mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor among you. Open your mouth and the cause of all such as they are pointed to be destroyed. These children who were ripped apart in the womb of their mothers, even the children who are pointed to be destroyed. Still, that's what the Bible is talking about. They have no voice. A child in the womb cannot cry. Oh, he has no voice. It is you. It is you to give him or her a voice. Isn't it? Yeah. It is you. He can't cry out. Give him a voice. Give him a voice. That's my voice I use when I don't have a microphone. See, God has given me a voice, that child had no voice. Even this boy in Rwanda, I don't know if he was a Hutu or a Tutsi, killed by genocide. Can you say genocide? Genocide. Genus, I mean you know from science, biology, it means a class. Sibyl, side means to kill, isn't it? So genocide is when you kill people based on a category or a classification, isn't it? And these children were killed because of their tribe in Rwanda many years ago. Not so long. Today, in the country, 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 in the Genocide. Are you hearing me? Genocide. Amen. Will you pray with me? <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for these young men and young women. You were a bit late, so I thank you for helping us come here and spend this time with them. Thank you for the things we've been able to uh, give them at least a little something to remember us by and to remember your innocent children. God, help us to give them a voice. Amen. God, the future of this country and this community is in the hands of these young people. Help us. Help them. I can't do it without 
them. And none of us can do it without you, O oh God. You are our creator and the creator of these innocent children. God, help them and protect them and don't let anyone tell them that their life has no value or that the life of these innocent children in the womb has no value. Oh God, we thank you. God, we thank you because you were not ashamed in the womb of Mary to become a human being and to be born as a, a baby boy in the womb of a woman, a blessed woman, the mother of Jesus. We thank you, God. Now, God, as we uh, separate for a few moments, we ask you to help us to open our hearts to receive the truth and let the truth be in the lips and in the mouths and upon the lips of our presenters. In Jesus' name, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'd like to ask the young men in an orderly fashion. In an orderly fashion, stand up.